The Deal News Podcast, episode 227 for September 12th. What does Apple have in its pockets? <laughs> pockets. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Gollum. You know, oh, you okay, know? there you go. All right. I just, I just like, a, got caught on a S there. Because it's a question we'll never know the answer to. Right. Um, anyway, let me, let me just introduce you guys first. I'm joined <laughs> by Lewis and Dan. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, guys. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, uh, I do want to disclaim, uh, just like Gollum in The Hobbit, we will not know what Apple has in its pockets, at least not this week, because we are recording this episode on Tuesday. So that is a day before the announcement, apparently for the iPhone 5, that is happening on Wednesday, September 12th. So in case you downloaded this at some point after they did that announcement and you were hoping to see what we talk about uh, we're not going to be talking about it. We're going to talk about that next week. Um, so don't worry. We're still going to cover Apple. Don't worry. We just couldn't talk about it this week because because of the linear motion of time. Really? <laughs> yes, we don't have the, the technology. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. But someday um, yes. we'll be able to talk about Apple's products before they are announced. Or maybe should we, should we have just faked this with vague statements and be like, how about that? Apple announcement, huh, guys? <laughs> it was amazing. I can't believe all the features they didn't put in the new product. I can't I, believe they left that out. I yes. just pre-ordered. <laughs> <laughs> I used my credit card to pre-order it for price. <laughs> so next week, all Apple, probably all Apple all the time. This week, though, uh, we have some other stuff to talk about, starting uh, not leastly with some feedback. Oh. Uh, this one comes in from James C. He says, hi, guys. Interesting podcast regarding self-service kiosks at the store. I don't know where you guys are shopping, but I rarely run into problems with them being out of order, which, of course, means the next time I go to use one, they'll all be broken. Uh, also, regarding studios and streaming movie services, wasn't that what Hulu was for? Thanks for the podcast. Always good to hear your opinion on things. James C., Yes, the broken promises of Hulu. <laughs> uh, was that, I mean, that was supposed to be, right, what it was going to be for. It was for, but it was more for the TV studios, right, to be a clearinghouse for their thought. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, it just so happens that, like, uh, ABC is owned by Disney, so that they did have movies to put on there and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the promise was is that we would be getting TV and movies through Hulu. And, um yeah. Best laid Maybe plans. Yeah. <laughs> Best laid plans of Hulu and men, I guess. Right. Uh, all right. And we have another piece of feedback. This one that says, Hey guys, another funny podcast to pass the time on my morning walk. I did watch the first video version, but found myself mesmerized by the hanging pots <laughs> to the extent that I was tuning out what you were saying. I had to go back to just listening. Uh, anyway, the discussion of the various streaming services was interesting, but you made the same underlying assumption as most people do, and that assumption is that most of us has some kind of fast internet. The various providers would have you believe that, but the reality is a bit removed. Uh, I find it annoying to get mailed, emailed, and even hung on the door adverts claiming that I should sign up to my current ISP to get blazing download speeds of up to 19.2 Mbps megabits per second, when the reality is that I can only get 1.56 megabits per second at my house, which is just barely okay for some streaming, though always at the risk of pixelation or restarts. If Netflix and Redbox stop their delivery of physical DVDs, a whole lot of folks in this country are going to be stuck with their satellite provider channels and shows since they don't have cable or DSL internet for that streaming content. Alex P. And I think he makes a, a great uh, Very point true. there. You know? yeah. um, I don't know. Are we? I think maybe we're just spoiled because uh, you know, for our jobs, we have to have some high-speed internet access so, so we could do stuff like this. So I think I think maybe uh, for a while there, I, I took high-speed internet access as a as a granted in the country. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of people that don't have it, and uh, you know, so kind of complaining about streaming services is, uh, you know, <laughs> isn't that in the Constitution as one of our inalienable rights uh, <laughs> right. to have blazing fast internet? I thought I read that. The right to blaze the internet, the right to <laughs> bear arms, and yeah, it was snuck in there underneath I, the. Bear I wonder. I wonder if uh, in the future, if real estate agents will start listing how fast your internet speed will be at a certain house as part. They of already the do. They already do. What? No way. Yeah, at least here in Jersey they do. 
Really? So oh, when oh, you look at a house... They might not even sell, maybe not so much the speed, they'll say like, what is it, is it a T1 line or T3? Which one's when it's really fast? T, uh, well, T3's. T3's the fastest. T1000 is pretty, yeah. that's the one <laughs> I that feel wants like we're talking about you. computers now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the liquid metal one from Terminator. Yeah, I think so. But you yeah, they, they, they tell you, like, you know, this is already equipped with like a T1000, T1, whatever, the T1. fast internet. <laughs> I'm or kidding about the T1000. Or sometimes they'll say, you know, oh, this apartment is like, you know, it's ready for Verizon Fios, or hmm. you know, they'll make it a point of letting you know what kind of um, ISP oh. you have. Uh, before you buy or even rent, actually, to be honest, that's that's uh that is interesting. I didn't. Uh, they they yeah, don't do that here in the southern region. Yeah, I and when I'm I'm trying to think back, we've been in this apartment. Geez, we've been in this apartment for eight years, I think, as you could tell by our pots and pans collection. You only get those kind of pots and pans. <laughs> for eight years. Uh, yeah, I I don't think I even thought to ask at the time, and 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 thinking back on it, I I probably should have, knowing that I had this job and that you know I I would need internet access at home. Hmm. I guess that's something that you have to think about asking from now on. Yeah, sometimes you don't even have to ask; they'll tell you. Hmm. They yeah. actually they take pride in saying like, oh, you know, we have super fast internet, or you know, you can right. sign up with FiOS, like I mentioned. Or, or yeah, whatever. I could see if it's FiOS that they would probably really want to mention that because people yeah, are, are excited about it. FiOS. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I think we should all go look at new houses, and <laughs> uh, just as an experiment, and see if they actually ask uh, or tell us. You know what? Uh, what they have? You should be like, does this have T one thousand? Does this have T one thousand? I have no idea. What you're I say about. we just go look at new houses and declare squatters' rights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyone live here now? I do, and you yeah, just plant I'm the living flag. here. You can't kick me out. Yes. How does squatters' rights work? You just have to break into some place and then just not yeah, leave. Yeah, you just you that... break in. And just it's kind of like bad house guests. They just show up and they just never leave. <laughs> I've had my share of those. Yeah, I know. Uh, Much like cheese, house guests start to smell after three days. <laughs> well, I thought it was fish. Fit well, both things. Oh, start. fish. Well, yeah. If you leave them out long enough. <laughs> if you leave your guests out long enough. <laughs> put your put your guests in the refrigerator. Keep keep them fresh longer. Yes. Pro tip for you guys. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the big news of the week, at least uh, until tomorrow afternoon <laughs> in real time when Apple announces their stuff. Uh, the big news for me, and tell me if you guys agree or not, is the fact that Amazon announced new Kindles. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's pretty exciting. All right. The th can I tell you the thing I found most exciting? What? Tablets starting at 159 Ridiculous, isn't that? I Ridiculous. One hundred and fifty nine dollars. Did, did that... we not say that the sweet spot was gonna be one ninety nine ninety nine? Uh, Did I we think, predict that? I, I don't think we hit the, we even got close to the 159. Right? right. I think yeah, we, I, I knew that it was going to go under 199, but I never imagined 159. I, mean, we I was like, you know what? like 179 maybe. Yeah, I was thinking 179, 189, maybe like, you know, around that, but 159 just completely yeah. unexpected. Yeah, pretty one, amazing. 159, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, all right, again, sitting, uh, I just wound, I just said that uh, I might have a skewed perspective on certain things uh, <laughs> with the streaming, you know, the, the, the high-speed internet, but I'm about to say something again that shows a skewed <laughs> thing. 159, kind of almost impulse purchase level, I, right? I, I'm I telling agree. you, I would be very <laughs> tempted to purchase a Kindle Fire at uh, 159. Are you going to do it? I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. torn. I'm like totally torn because my wife now is using her Kindle, so I can't use her Kindle anymore. Mm -hmm. So now I need I need a tablet device. Need. <laughs> need. Yes, first world problems. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, man, I I would be so tempted to plunk down a buck fifty nine for that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, how, how do they do it? It seems like how they're going to do it is with ad supported, right? Yes. Um, so the the lock and unlock screen is going to have an ad on it, and the main page has a small ad on it. Is that such an egregious thing to agree to to get a one fifty nine one fifty nine? I can't I can't get over it. The same conversation we had when they released the special offer Kindle before. It was the exact same conversation. Man, do I want to? Is it worth the ad intrusion to save some money on a new Kindle? I, I would say yes. Yeah. See, I, I feel like it's a conversation worth having again because the e-ink Kindle, I don't know, like ads on there, you know, whatever. 
but then you, you have a tablet device. I mean, it's a tablet device that, you know, you get so cheap for ad supported. I think that a tablet just offers you so much more right. for, you know, what you get that I, I feel like the ad supportedness of it is an even better bargain, really. Like, I'm willing to put up with ads to get a tablet at 159 more than maybe I'm willing to put up with ads to just read a book, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. Would would you, would the ads bother you guys? See, I'm I'm kind of torn about that. Like, all right. So like the ads are across all the Kindles, not just the 159, but the 199 ones as well. And the thing that gets me about the ads is the fact that when the original Kindle Fire came out, it came out at 199, no ads. You know, it was just straight on Kindle Fire. Now they have the Kindle Fire HD at 199. With ads. Oh, so wait a minute. Like, wait a second. I didn't know that they were all going to have ads across the board. Yeah, yeah, they all have ads across the board. Oh, yeah. well, that sucks then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You see, you see prices like one fifty nine. You think ad supported? Well, that's that's what's making it one fifty nine. But right. the the new Kindle Fire HD, which has a uh, some better specs inside, is one ninety nine. The eight point nine inch. Fire HD is 2.99, and the 8.9 inch Fire HD with 4G is 4.99. All and those, of that. right? Those sound like prices that don't have ads, but you know, compare them again to like the iPad, where the prices are way higher than that. And well, you're you're comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> but it'll always be pun intended. I know it really will. <laughs> but but I mean, wouldn't you think? And maybe this is just me. I mean, when we had this discussion prior about, okay, well, you know, they got a Kindle and it's ad supported, so you're going to pay less. But wouldn't you think that paying $200 or anything above that, you shouldn't have ad support? That just seems like a lot of money to pay I agree. for constant mm. ads. Yeah. I, or, or does it just seem like a lot of money to pay because the low one is, sounds so low? You know, yeah. I I think had they not introduced one at 159, they might have been able to get away with the higher price ones a little better. Like, mm -hmm. oh, and it's at 199. We have to have ads in order to keep it at this cost. I mean, Jeff Bezos has been very upfront by saying, like, look, we can only offer these at this price because you're buying content and we're serving ads on them. I was actually shocked about the fact that he actually said that they make absolutely no, they take a hit with hardware. Yep. And what was it? He said something along the lines of like, you know, if, if, if you as a tablet owner, you buy a Kindle Fire and you don't buy any content from us, then we don't deserve to make money. Right. I He's think like, he said that's something along the, yeah, mm -hmm. he said that's our fault. That's Amazon's fault. If you get a Kindle Fire and you don't buy anything on it, that's Amazon's fault. Yeah. Um, he was very upfront about the fact that, you know, it, it's, it's a content, it's a device to sell content. Right, it's a lot. It's uh, well, I guess I don't know if "lost leader" is the is the best terminology for it, um, but yeah, I mean it's it's sort of like uh, what inkjet printers are today. Inkjet mm -hmm. printers really aren't; they're not making money on the printer itself. Yeah, it's like right. all the ink that they're selling. Yeah, well, it was the old Gillette slogan of uh, "Give the razor away, sell the blades." You know, you right. make you make the money on the blades, and the new razor is. The printer is the Amazon tablet, you know. Right. Um, and it's 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 kind of interesting though to see Jeff Bezos be so upfront about it and be like, "Look, you know, we need you to buy things on this because we're losing money on each one." That's, right. That's still pretty fascinating. Um, but yeah, I think Lost Leader is a great uh, definition of of what these tablets all are. Mm. Um, yeah. They can only offer them at this price, you know, because of. But but I mean, still, like you said, Jeff, 159 is just ridiculously amazing. That's and the crazy. fact is that 159 is the Amazon Kindle SD. It's not even the old version. So the right. old version, they took, they updated it. I think they said they made it 40 or 30 percent faster mm -hmm. than the 2011 version. So that claims to be 40 percent faster. Claims to be 40 percent wow. faster. Yeah. So With that 159 and longer battery life. Sorry. So that 159 gets you like you know Kindle Fire. 2012 SD. So you're not buying an old product, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that is really cool. Like this if you think about the way that Apple did their iPad update where it was like, "Oh, you can get the old and busted for a little <laughs> less, but we have this new really cool one." And Amazon is like, "No, you can't buy that old one because it is busted. We're going to update that one and drop the price on it." And mm. you know, we'll offer, you know, think about it that way. That's that's pretty That's ridiculous. a great move. That was a great yeah. move by Amazon, yeah. Because Amazon very easily could have just said, like, we have the new HD version, we'll continue to create the one that 
we made last year and cut the price to 159 and right. they would have been able to get away with that mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't you know they, they they did a lot of cool stuff for people i think i yeah. think well you know it's a, no, well here's the big question there are you going to go buy one no, i really <laughs> want one i, I know really i do, do too but it's like i'm sitting here going man but um, this is where this is the big uh, conundrum for me. It's like I I feel like if I buy the one fifty nine one, I'm gonna go. What am I missing out by not buying the one ninety nine one? <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like, that's why I hate myself sometimes because I'm like the consummate consumer. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I better buy one of each then, just to make sure that I'm not left <laughs> out uh, from a technological standpoint. So you kind of get uh, bitten by the whole like this is kind of like Amazon standing behind the counter being like. Well, for forty bucks more, you can get exactly. a large. Do you, you want know? to supersize it? Yeah, no, okay. supersize forty your, bucks uh, more. Your for Kindle just, Fire. Just twenty-five cents more. Oh, you can also add a soda. <laughs> Damn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. If I did buy one, I certainly would uh, probably go for the Kindle Fire, just the SD version, the one fifty-nine. Because yeah, I mean, I didn't buy the last Fire because one ninety-nine was still a little bit like. I don't know, it felt a little too luxury for me. Sure. <laughs> you sure. know, and the 159, you get everything updated. Oh, and it has a camera in it as well, which is yeah. uh, that's that's pretty, nice. That's pretty I don't know. Cool. How good is the camera? Does it say? Um, I can't. No, one I don't megapixel. Think they, yeah, I don't. Oh, they released yeah. it? The spec for it? No. no. One megapixel. <laughs> VGA. I was just lying. I was throwing out numbers. <laughs> VGA. One pixel. It'll, you just get the color of what <laughs> you're pixel, looking at. Yeah. It's right. very abstract. Very abstract. Um, I want to see a comparison of the dimensions, though. Uh, I don't really see a comparison of the dimensions of the new Kindle Fire SD versus the old Kindle Fire. I wonder if it's like thinner or smaller or lighter at all. I don't remember them saying that during the keynote. I'll have to look yeah, into that. Because the Kindle Fire as it is, it's a little, it's a little chunk style, you know. It's a little fat, you know, a little, a little heavy. Maybe that's just because. My wife has hers in a in a sleeve. Yeah, now here's thing. something. So what's the deal? Uh, I just noticed this. Maybe I'm jumping ahead in the show notes, but jump ahead. You can actually remove the the ads for 15 bucks. Yes. Yes. That well, is. What's the deal? What is the deal with that, Lewis? There was there was like this huge, kind of small little controversial part of the keynote of the Amazon keynote where they said like, oh, you know, here are the new Kindles, here are the prices, and then afterwards, I think someone asked. Uh, Jeff Bezos, they're like, oh, you know, I just noticed that there's an ad on this. And then that's when, like, oh, yeah, all of them come with ads. Mm -hmm. And then the, no one really gave it that much attention, but there was like, oh, by the way, it, it was a side note. You know, they all have ads. But then people started saying, like, hey, what do you mean they have ads? What if you don't want ads? And then Amazon right. was like, well, I mean, we have ads. Sorry, that's just right. the way it is. And then they went back and forth. Is there a way to remove the ads or not? And at first, Amazon said, no, you can't remove them. And then they backtracked a little bit, and they said, like, all right, you know what? Here's our official stance on it. If you don't want the ads, pay $15 more, and you could remove them from all wow. of the from all of the Kindle yeah. Fire devices. Yeah, do you think it was just, do you think that they kind of had that in mind anyway, but they're like, let's float this past consumers and see if there's a reaction online about us having ads on all of them. Exactly, because, I think that's exactly what they sure. were doing. Right, because I mean, they, they already had this in place for the e-inks where it's like, oh, you could pay us to remove ads from it. And um, they said it up front. They said it like, you know, the subsidized, unsubsidized. But with yeah. the fire, they didn't really spend any time talking about that until someone pointed it out. Yeah. So it's almost like they were saying like, all right, let's see if, the, you know, let's see if you get flamed for this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Or maybe, I mean, since they never really released the numbers of sales on their devices, what if they know that the subsidized e-ink Kindles are, uh, are more higher selling than the others? So they just figured that the majority of people wouldn't mind if they're all yeah. ad supported, you know. Sure. <clears throat> but so, so in other words, if you want a ad free Kindle, you just gotta plunk down fifteen dollars more. Yeah. Right. Can I use my Amazon MP three credits for that? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. They give those out all the time. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I'd I'd do that. The thing that I don't like about uh, this situation is that I bought a Kindle before they offered the, you know, the discounted ones with ads. And some of the ads that they show you are really good. It's like, oh, buy a $20 Amazon gift card for $10. Right. I would love to have access to that. I can't opt in to see the ads. Like, I would love to take the Kindle that I have and say, well, give me $20. You want ads. <laughs> yeah, show me the ads because sometimes it's... Sometimes it was like uh, an audiobook from Audible for a dollar, 
which is which if you ever bought an audio book those things are really expensive and like they have some really good deals you know on on those ads so i would right. like to be able to get that and i'm just wondering with these with these new kindles and the tablets if you buy out of these ads can you buy back in somehow <laughs> you know i want i want to be able to go back in if i start hearing all my friends would be like oh yeah i got three albums for free because of the you know ad supported kindle I want, that's a good point you know yeah, this is what I was curious about. So the ads that you see on your Kindle, are they the Amazon local ads or are they something completely different? I'm not sure exactly what they are. I because think... if they're Amazon local, I, I don't want to be seeing a learn how to make sushi ad every time I turn on my Kindle. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't, but if I don't it is, if it is are. like you said, like you know, if it is like kind of like in-house ads, like you know, a twenty dollar Amazon gift card for ten bucks or you know a ten dollar Amazon MPD credit for five bucks, then yeah, I would totally keep the ads. Right. If they're if they're really that good, I I would totally keep it. I'd, yeah. I'd be fine with it. Yeah, you don't want like oh massage. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't want to see those ads. ads. You know, I think they're all national ads because I think you'll see ads for like car companies on there as well as like uh, nationally released movies oh, and, right. and things that everyone can get. I don't think that they're targeted. Um, that way, although they very easily could. I mean, they know all the information about me from my ordering history. They could start serving up local ads anytime they wanted. Just based yeah. on your zip code. Yeah, exactly. I would think. Yeah. And if I put in the wrong zip code or like I moved or whatever, that's my own fault. <laughs> then that's I'll right. just see ads that really don't pertain to me and I would want to go and change that. So Which that is interesting because you, you would think Google would be the first one to do that, you know? Yeah, you would think, huh? Hmm. Don't well, give them any ideas, guys. <laughs> I'm sure they have that idea. They just haven't released it for right. whatever reason. Well, it's because their tablet's not ad supported, which they missed mm -hmm. a trick there. Because you know, Google maybe they'll have ad, uh, ad support yeah. on that Orb thing that they were releasing. <laughs> <'cause>, like, <laughs> audio ads. <laughs> That'd be great. While you're listening to music or streaming a YouTube video from your computer to your TV, it just inserts an ad like, <laughs> "Wouldn't you really like some Coca-Cola <laughs> right now?" Buy a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, these uh, other things were announced along with these uh, these tablets. Some some features that are really cool, I think, and some that are not. The not falls into the category of things like serials. You can buy a book and get it a chapter at a time as the author finishes it, or wow. as the author. Yeah, taking us back to the good old days of Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> well, even even more currently, uh, what Stephen King did with the Green Mile, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, what he did online with the Mist. Basically, mm -hmm. it was sort of a, I'll keep writing these if you guys keep paying type of deal. I think that's hmm. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I think it's a little different because I think you just buy one of them and it just updates as you go. So the examples that they have, they show they're like a dollar ninety nine each. I don't know if that's per segment or if you're paying that one ninety nine and then you're gonna get the rest of them, you know, for the oh, rest of Oh it's gotta the... be per segment, I would think. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine I mean, wouldn't you think that? Because uh if I was an author and I'm writing a book you know, I'd be more tempted to sit there and write, okay, it's a one-chapter book, suckers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Pollock out, because that's one of the guys who has <laughs> things. So let's see, the Kindle Serials page on Amazon says, Kindle Serials are stories published in episodes. When you buy a Kindle Serial, you will receive all existing episodes on your Kindle immediately, followed by future episodes as they are published. Enjoy reading oh. as the author creates the story and discuss episodes with other readers in the Kindle forums. And they have the list, the, the price here listed at one ninety nine. For uh, for all these, really? Hmm. Yeah. So, are, and these are well-known authors. Uh, do you know who Neil Pollock is, or uh, Andrew Peterson? Nope. No. Carol Culver or Danny no. Amore. Uh, uh, oh, that's Amore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I understand. Yeah, I don't know who any of these people are, but you know, like I'm sure people who are always willing to get on the cutting edge of things, like Stephen King, right. may get in on this, or uh, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll get in on this. You I think you should. I was just going to say you should. Uh, I think you should re-release some of your books on the serial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. release my one book that I have written and not touched in like ten years. That's all right, man. <laughs> release that. I'll, I'll call it uh, unrevived. By Jeff <laughs> yes. or please, yeah, please forgive me. <laughs> this. Um, all right, let's see. Other extras that they announced was Whisper Sync for voice. This one I find really cool. You start reading a book, you then decide that you want to go for a drive. 
So <laughs> it syncs to the audiobook version of the book. Really? And the audiobook starts playing from where you left off reading. You get out of the car, you pick up the book again, you want to read at night uh, in bed, but you don't want to listen. It then syncs your book, the, the f physical book, digital book, to where you stopped when you were listening. That's, That's pretty very cool. cool. That is kind of fascinating. That is like very that. cool. Now, how do they justify the... I mean, so in other words, unless you're paying extra for this... You do. Oh, you do pay extra. Because yes. I was sitting there thinking, man, I, that the authors would be taking quite a hit. You yeah. know, because they sit down and read those books or hire yeah. somebody to do it or hire Samuel L. Jackson to do it or something <laughs> like that. But, yeah, and like, uh, I, like I said, audiobooks are always really, really expensive. Right. Um, but the way it works here, um, I looked up uh, one of these books, uh, and if you buy the digital version, this one was for nine ninety nine. You can get the Audible audiobook for a reduced price of eight forty nine, which is oh, okay, a really great deal. <laughs> yeah, considering I mean that's a third of the price of what you could almost a third of the price of what uh, you can buy it on uh, audio Audible for. So would so, you do that? Would you pay the extra eight bucks to have the option of reading versus listening? For most books, I don't like listening to them. I only like listening to like science books and things like that from on audio because I find those more boring to read. I like those being read to me. Right. But for like fiction, I would rather just like read the book. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I find my that my mind drifts more when I listen to the audio book. Um, yeah, you guys like this this thing. Would you do? Would you ever take advantage of it, or is it just something that's like that's cool, but not for me? It's, it's a cool feature. I don't. I mean, I think I've only listened to part of one audiobook. Much like what you were saying, it's easier for me to zone out yeah. if I'm just sitting there listening. It's like being in a lecture hall. Yeah, you know. Exactly. Agreed. Um, Agreed. You, you know, it's like Angry Birds. Blah blah blah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I don't think I would. I don't. I mean, as cool as that is. If it was if it was bundled into the price and I couldn't do anything about it, then it would be a nice option to have. Mm. But I wouldn't kick down an extra ten bucks for that. Yeah, well, a right. little, little over eight, not ten, Dan. Well, yeah. I'm just rounding it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's some big rounding. It is. <laughs> oh, and for the first time ever during the live video, that's right. If you're listening to the audio, we're doing video again. Um, I see that we have a viewer, so I'm oh, we waving. do. I'm waiting awesome. to our viewer. I don't know who Bye. it is because I can't, I can't see the name. So, I just see that it says one viewer. Uh, hi, mom. So. <laughs> if, it's the, if, it's, if it's the feds, I have a viable excuse for where I was. Uh, uh, let's see. Other extras that they introduced are Kindle Free Time. This is for kids. This creates a kind of like a limited sandbox on the tablet, uh, so that kids can play around with anything you put in there, and you can also put a limit on the time that they can spend on the oh, tablet. That's, cool. that's pretty cool. And I think it also says that it changes the background color of the yeah. tablet so you know it's in kitty mode or something. Yeah. I'm shocked no one's thought of that before. You know? Yeah, I, well, I was shocked actually that they haven't done that across the board on tablets, like have a kid mode. Right. right. I mean, they, they have it on most OSs, right, where you can, uh, or at least on Windows, where you can say, like, look, during this time of day, my kid can use it and it can and block these kinds of sites and things like that. Right. So it's, it's pretty natural to bring it to tablets, but they're the first to do it. The only people who have tried to compete are, say, Toys R Us, who just announced their own tablet called the Tabio, right. which is 150, and it's a tablet only for kids. What was the name again? Tabio. Tabio? Like a tabby cat, but a I Tabio. Was gonna say, sounds like something you name your cat. <laughs> tabio. Tabio the cat. It's um, cat flavored cereal, Tabio. <laughs> <laughs> That's great <laughs> with hair, extra hairball marshmallows. Extra hairball. <laughs> uh, so for 150, you can get the Tabio, which is just for kids and can only buy apps through the kids app store, and you can hand the thing to your kids. Or for nine dollars more, you can get a tablet that the whole family can use in the ad-supported Kindle SD. Fine. Get the kids the SD. I mean, if you're going to spend right? 150, just spend an extra nine bucks. Give the kid the Amazon Kindle. You know? Yeah. 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 Seriously. And, and that way, and, then you can borrow when they're asleep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a tablet that they're going to be able to grow with, even. Right. You know? So it's like, well, 
once they reach a certain age, you're going to be like, son, today you turn 18. I'm going to unlock your Kindle <laughs> for you. You may now download a book that is R-rated. You yeah. can now stream Netflix. Graduation from, from yeah. the tabio to the fire. Right. It's, uh, it's the new coming of age for a digital society. <laughs> it is. Uh, also, an extra is they have X-Ray for movies. I guess X-Ray is the thing on the Kindle where you get uh, additional information about the book that you're reading as oh. you're reading it. This is for movies, so as you're watching a film, you can tap the screen, and it uh, pulls up a little IMDB widget that tells you who is in the scene that you're currently watching and what other movies they've been into, and you can like go and look at their other Ooh, stuff. That's kind of creepy that they actually would know that. Right? Like, they would index the scene. I mean, it yeah. must just be for like new movie releases that they like have already have done announced that. this for right because you're yeah. not going to go back and watch Citizen Kane and be like Orson Welles see other <laughs> things Orson Welles wait how did it know I don't think face recognition is that good Just I was going to say I would think it would be pretty difficult if you're watching like Gladiator and all of a sudden there's like 18,000 IMDb <laughs> right. windows oh he was an extra in uh, 7 back in the day that would but that would be really awesome, wouldn't it? Because you'd be like, that guy in the way, way back there. Can in I the like, Yeah. Can I highlight his face and then, uh, <laughs> you know, tell me what else he's been in? You know. Oh. I don't know if it's going to get that deep. Uh, but they also did. What's that, Dan? Sorry. I said I hope not. Oh, all right. I don't. Yeah. I don't really care. It's like I. Just wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to see the movie with all the IMDb screens up. Right? Right. <laughs> it would be like pop-up video just covering it. You have to like keep closing all these windows in order to see the Huntsman or whatever it is. Uh, that's that's right. That's the name of the movie: Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman. All right. Just, uh, just want to make sure that I have my finger on the pulse of today's movies. Wait, let me let me hit my widget here on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Who else is in that? I don't know who's in that. Uh, all right, they also announced new e-ink Kindles, um, something that they are calling Paper White. It has 62% more pixels and a backlight, which is uh, apparently pretty even and nice, nicely bright. And even with using the backlight, it's supposed to be able to last something like eight weeks? Of uptime, eight. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, granted, that's that's based on using it thirty minutes a day uh, oh. with the backlight on, but even still, that's not so bad. Eight weeks. That's you know? that's a long time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's almost two months. <laughs> <laughs> you could finish a book in that amount of time, <laughs> or two if you if you if you're a speed reader. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Tabio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the e-ink Kindles, uh, not the paper white, but one of the, I don't know, what are we going to call the old version of the Kindle now? The dirty white or the off-white? Dirty, off-white. Yeah, I off-white. Yeah. Uh, the, the cheapest version of that is $69, which wow. um, uh, barrier to entry to reading e-books has never been more achievable. I mean, wow. yeah. that is ridiculous. I remember when ebooks were like ridiculously expensive, like one ninety nine, some some even more than that. And I was oh, just like, yeah. oh man, that's just too pricey. Then they have to come down. And well, here they are. Prices yeah. are like right. under a hundred, comfortably under a hundred dollars. Now you can actually afford to read. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the olden days, we had to pay a thousand dollars to gain entry to the library. Had to pay for that words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Let's oh, see. Uh, also, is there anything else to say about these uh, these Kindle things? Did I miss anything? Is there anything you guys want to? I'd love to get a poll from our uh, listeners and find out if they're actually going to go out and buy. Yeah. Um, one. Yeah. Let us know. Because um, I mean, they're just the lowest end ones are just so attainable in price. One fifty nine, right. sixty nine dollars. I mean. I don't know. If you haven't bought before, are you buying this one? Why are you buying this one over something else? I don't know. Feedback to us, listeners. Feedback to us, viewers. Let us know. Let us know. Now, here's a qu- here's a quick question because uh, the Christmas season is rapidly closing in on us. Uh, what do you think this is going to do to the sale of e-readers for the holiday season? Do you think this is going to be the gift to purchase, or do you think something else is going to pop up like the new iPhone or something like that? For ebooks, I think I think Kindle kind of has the corner on it now, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. unless the Nook responds by adjusting their prices. Well, wait, wasn't there an announcement or something that they said Barnes and Noble was gonna was gonna release something uh, sometime in September? Um, 
what it was supposed to be do? a Nook that ran Windows. Something yeah. like that, if, or, or else they were working with Microsoft. Like you, it's like bundled into Windows Eight or something like that. So I you think maybe like a, the... a Windows Eight Nook or something along those lines? Mm, Would that maybe. be of any interest to anyone? Uh, I don't, uh, not me. Not, not so much. <laughs> but then again, you know, I'm a Kindle family. You know, I, I like the Kindles. So. Well, I, I think the Kindle was the first to really put the stake in the ground as far as yeah. ebooks are are concerned. Yeah. Um, I know I've got. I have. A, I, I've actually got a Nook like sitting on a shelf back here that I have not even <laughs> and charged up to turn it on yet. <laughs> so. So that tells you something. Because, and you know why? Let, uh, just to be honest, it's like because remember, Amazon keeps giving out free ebooks. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, wow, you know, uh, do I want to learn about home distilling? Here, let's download that one for free. How about, uh, you know, the story about cat detectives? We'll download that one for free. So it's like, <laughs> and you, don't you, know, mean, you don't mean a detective that looks for cats. You mean a cat who a cat that's a detective. detective. Yeah. Yes. Free yes. ebooks. I know how they work. <laughs> Where do those cats get those little trench coats anyway? I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, like, what you were, exactly what we were talking about. It's like they, you know, their seeding, you know, their own their own soil in a sense. Yeah, it's like sure. they're giving you something that you can read, therefore perpetuating the product. And I think that's brilliant. And Nook just has not done that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, Nook will make some headlines by reducing the price, or they're the first ones that had a backlit e-ink Kindle, and everyone was like, whoa, and Amazon better react to this somehow. And right. even though it took them months to do, I think this is quite a good reaction to that. And right. I, I think this puts uh, Amazon back on top of the e-book game. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they ever lost a spot. I think Amazon has that hands down. I mean, yeah. Amazon is to ebooks what the iPad was to MP3s. Oh, I'm not sorry, the iPod. Yeah, you know they right. just owned that market. They took it from the start, and they're not they're not letting go. I they're agree. making sure that they never let go of that market. I agree. Also, a uh, quick follow up here is that uh, we talked about the uh, the lawsuit over ebook price fixing, oh, right. uh, and uh, the settlement went through. We should start seeing checks come in or being you know, like. Uh, telling us when to expect this money. But uh, pretty immediately, Amazon was like, all right, we are back to reducing prices. And uh, so now if you go to Amazon and look through the eBooks, anything that's from uh, HarperCollins or um, who are the other ones? Louis, do you remember? I know definitely Harper. Um, trying to think off the top of my head what the other ones are. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Not Penguin because they didn't settle. Um, but uh, anyway, well, I, I just know from first... Simon and Schuster and Hachette. I had to look it up. Sorry. Right. Okay. So Simon and Schuster and Hachette, you're saying? Yes. All right. Yeah. So if you go, you're actually going to see those prices be cut again. It was so great to go to the Amazon ebook store and just see like nine ninety nine everywhere. Like books that I had added to my wish list and wasn't going to buy them until they came down to like a paper book paperback right. prices are all like nine ninety nine, seven ninety nine, and I'm just like, oh, glorious. <laughs> so, so great. I could buy so many more books now. It's amazing. So awesome, for, awesome to Amazon for doing that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right? To, to, to be like, oh, we're allowed to again? Doing it, you know? Prop, not, props to them. Yeah. Yes. Not, not even yeah, they're, they have really been stepping up as far as reacting to the market. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I I I don't think they're going away anytime soon. No, I think Amazon's all right. You know? <laughs> that's like they're uh, they're right in my book. Yeah. <laughs> the other the other day, uh, I was talking with my wife. We happen to love the uh, Resident Evil movies. Yeah, yeah. sue me. Yeah. They're great. They're a lot of fun, except the second one, not so good. Um, but they they're on Amazon. I think they're on sale for like five ninety nine to buy. Oh. You know, and and I was like, well. We like these. We'll probably want to watch them again. Five ninety nine is a little bit more than rental. Should I buy them? But then there was that moment of like, ooh, but what if Amazon goes away and then we don't own these really because they're going to be like saved on their servers and like we have to download them from there. Right. And I, I was like, I, I second thoughts. I'm like, I don't think Amazon's going anywhere. Right. <laughs> At least not for a while, right? I mean, the, this. I mean. People have said that about, I guess, AOL in the past, and look that's, what happened to true. them. That's true. You know, that is true. But I don't know. Do you yeah, guys think I, I, the, 
No, I, I think the industry would be in ridiculous amount of trouble if, if Amazon were to go away. I think we'd have bigger problems in the world if Amazon were to go away. Right. You're not so worried about watching a movie <laughs> yeah. because the nukes are going off. Right? <laughs> Pretty much. If I could just catch the last five minutes before my screen melts. <laughs> All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the show. Wow. So thank you both for joining this me. This was a very much very Amazon centric short uh, show. Very Amazon y. Amazon y is good content, yes. in fact. <laughs> uh, listeners, for links to today's stories, Twitter feeds, blog links, and more, go to our show notes page. Also, feel free to send us feedback to podcast at dealnews.com. And if you'd like, why not go to iTunes or your pod store of choice and leave us a favorable review if you found us favorable. That'd be great. Thanks. I'm Jeff Sumaji. Goodbye. <laughs>